Welcome back to another mock interview. This one's going to be a FANG level mock interview. Formation, thank you for lending me one of your instructors. Uh, Daniel, who is the interviewer, has been at Microsoft as a software engineer for about 10 years, Facebook for about seven. So I think this should be a really good mock interview, especially if you want to get a feel for what they're like. But yeah, uh, there's two problems and we'll see how far the interviewee gets. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for taking time to, to talk with us this morning. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, and I just want to make sure I'm saying your name correctly. It's Milos. Is that right? Yeah. It's Milos. Okay. okay great. Um, yeah. Just a little bit about me so you know who you're talking to. Um, I've been an engineer for about 20 years, mostly at Microsoft, and then at Facebook for a long time. Most of my career is at those two companies on lots of different teams. Then was at a small, a small company here in Seattle for a little while before I then shifted gears. And, and now I uh, am head of instruction at a small company uh, based out of San Francisco. We're a career accelerator called Formation. Um, and I spend most of my time teaching and writing content and uh, helping people become better software engineers. Uh, it's been a ton of fun, but I'm relatively new at it. Uh, like, tell me a little more about yourself, Milos. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've been working as a web developer for a small agency in Novi Sad, mm -hmm. uh, here in Serbia. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and I've been, um, I've been creating websites using WordPress but I, last year I decided to learn an actual programming language, so I attended uh, free code camp courses on uh, front end. There are three courses on free code camp. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, I uh, attended the Scrimba courses, also for front end, so JavaScript and React. And now I'm currently lo looking for an employment. So yeah, basically a new challenge awesome. to, to battle test my skills. I love it. We're both taking on new challenges. Exactly. Very, very cool. Well, uh, let's let's dive right into uh, the, the the first coding problem uh, of the day. Uh, it sounds like JavaScript is a, is an okay language for you. Um, yeah. I have things set up in JavaScript already, but if we if you prefer TypeScript or something else, no, um, no, it. Fine. Okay. All right. Let's let's do that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, please uh, take a look at the question, give it a read, and then uh, ask any questions. Yeah. I'll uh, determine the point value possible for the word. Uh, what do you what? What is a point value? Okay, so if you if you look at lines six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. there are values associated with every letter. Yeah, so, so I should count the letters. How many times it it is in a string? Okay, okay, okay. So those are your point values. I'll continue reading the question. Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. ask questions <laughs> as you have them, but you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should read the entire thing before asking. I'm just going to... Okay. <laughs> like that. Oh, I made a mistake here. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Copy pasta. Um, I see in the example. So the word is cat. The tiles are T M O C A. Why? Why is there an M and O? Oh, good question. So yeah. the tiles represent letters that I have available to make a word. Oh, right. So, yeah. so if I'm looking at these tiles and I'm, I'm wondering to myself, what words can I make? 
oh, given these letters, I could make the word cat. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have to use all of the available letters to make the word. So the tile set is not necessarily going to be an anagram of the word. Yeah. So let me reread that. Yeah. No real problem. quick. Yep. So again, over. Okay, so I get the, the string word and I get tile, a set of tiles. Yeah. So what happens uh, if uh, if there's no tiles that will match the string? Ah. Or is it, or is it uh, 100% that it will? That's an entirely reasonable question. So if the word is not possible to be made, just return yeah. minus one. Okay. Oh, here, hang on. Don't type that. You you keep thinking because I'm prepared. I don't want you to spend your time. Oh, with that. Okay. What what format do you want the tiles in? Mm. Like what type of data structure do you want them in? The tiles. Uh, it could be an array. An array? Oh, I don't yeah. have that. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, uh, Here's what I have. Thing, I'll split it. Here's what I have. Oh, you have an object. Okay. So. Oh, so let's type code on the other side. Uh, so here, here, let me. Let me uh, yes, yeah, that's yeah, gonna, yeah. yeah, that's where we're going to write code. And then actually, when we oh. run the code, oh. the yeah. output is going to be on the other side. So if you want to just yeah. test a line, like, you know, right, you can write a single line over there and run it. But we actually want to write the code. Oh, wait, you removed everything. No. Uh, oh, where did it all go? OK, there we go. Back. Yeah, so you can you can write your code like your I see your cursor at line twenty seven. Yeah, we can just start writing code there. Okay, and then when we run it, we'll see the output over on the other side. Sure. And please think out loud. Like if you if you have an idea, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe reject it. Maybe I'm not uh, speaking too loud. Um, yeah, no, it's okay. So yeah, I'm thinking about uh, looping to the chart array and comparing that to the values in the letter values object. So let's see how this goes. I want to see what this returns. Sure. Yeah. Run experiments. I love it. Hmm. Mm, 
yeah, my bad. So I didn't provide. <laughs> yeah, that right. helps. Yeah, so uh, it's a habit from yeah, there you go. from the code wars. Yeah, so from code wars. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know this. I'll have to look it up. Uh, it's like hacker rank. Oh, okay. Like. Okay. So yeah, so we get this. So we could use the this and okay, let's comment this out just as a reference. So sure. char array do this. So we start value zero. So we're gonna have the current and uh, the accumulator and the current and so when we loop mm, just a sec so letter values current letter current to be one in this case when we have all the letters present and in yeah in your tile set yeah yeah so this is the second use case so we should uh, disregard this yes uh, this, uh, is worth, this is worth zero point okay it's wor so so yeah. let's let's pause here and talk about that for a sec so okay. notice that there is no C in the tile set. Yeah. But there is a T and an A. Yeah. And we have a blank. Yeah. So we can only make cat in this case because we can use the blank, but we don't get those three points. Sure. So. I <clears throat> thinking about uh, sorting the array, so the underscores come last. So I could keep the track of uh, the letters found and the remaining letters, if they match the number of underscores, then yeah, we can have the solution. If, for, for example, we miss two letters, but we have only one underscore, then we could not. So, yeah, yeah. Um, right. so, so we I, either for every letter in the word, we either need an actual occurrence of that letter, yeah, yeah. or we need an underscore to fill in for it. Yeah. Okay. So let's. This may not be a, an optimal solution, but let's do this first. So it's either that, or I count the instances of the underscore in the string. So, mm, not sure which solution would work better. If the string is extra long, then it would be uh, looping through an array more than I should. Uh, which yeah. which solution uh, do you think uh, is looping this through? Is not the sorting uh, method. This is something else I had in mind that I first looked an array, count the number of underscore instances, and then I could um, use that in this array. So, yeah. Okay, let's do that first. See if, if it has any sense, if yeah. it makes any sense. So, let's... You're going with the counting approach. 
Yeah. Just to be um, clear. Okay, cool. So, uh, draw, array, draw. Mm, yeah, sorry. Filter. We could use also a regex, but sure. <laughs> I'm not supposed to Google things. So yeah. Uh, I guess yeah, you um, probably don't want to spend the time to look up regex syntax. <laughs> yeah, so uh, when I was learning regex, regex, not sure how you pronounce it, I watched the course uh, multiple times and I kept the cheat sheet that I read and that I wrote by hand. Yeah. So, it's yeah. uh regex is regex is one of those things where if you don't use it all the time, it's even it's it's hard to remember all the little subtleties yeah. of the syntax. Yeah, it fades away. Yeah. So either you like you use that every day or you kinda have to think carefully about it. <laughs> exactly. So I think so I basically did nothing. Char array filter. Yeah, so I shouldn't through this, but rather this. TMO, A, yeah. Trans filter, okay, so mm, that would make me. So, yeah. Notice that letter values, these are not the tiles themselves. These are the values of the tiles. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, you know, let's just try, mm -hmm. let's try sticking, you know, this is our tile set. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We can just use this as a global variable. I'm fine with that. Just a sec. I need to return. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, so I should compare it to this. Yeah, so I kind of missed my mark this sec. So let, let's pause for just a sec. Like, mm -hmm. so, so I shouldn't compare it to this. I uh, wait, wait, no, no, no. Let's back up just a little bit. Let's talk okay. about ca counting the underscores for a sec. Yeah. Are there ever situations where you need to count the other things also, the other tiles? Right. My the tile set might be, you know, there might be an extra T in here. There might be a. Yeah. Like, right. Are there situations where, where we need to know the count of more than just, just, just those underscores? So you mean when the letter repeats? Yeah, there, that's an interesting case. Um, or or how do we know if a letter is not there, right? Like in this case, we could have a C or we could have, you know, so now we can make cat two ways. We can make C-A-T and we can also make underscore A-T. Yeah. And we should, in this case, we should return five. Like, like, let's get all the points we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I provided a object instead of a string. So that kind of led me in the wrong direction. Yeah. So I should compare this to this. Uh, yeah. I should compare these two strings, not okay, not like, like, this per se. 
So of course, yeah, of course, it's gonna be present. Why was right? That? You need well, yeah. So you need to add yeah. it up only if you have the character available. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And so I think about splitting the tiles. But Yeah, because we're actually going to have two arrays of characters now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? To be fair, I am too. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. So I've never done a live broadcast interview before. So, you know, this is new for both of us. It's okay. Really? <laughs> You mean you thought I've done lots of live broadcast interviews? <laughs> yeah, so you seem very relaxed. You. <laughs> I'm pretending. Nice. You should give me some lessons. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I like to laugh in interviews a little bit, you know? Like, it's okay. Oh. <clears throat> Let's start this. Okay. We can scratch this. Let's actually pause for just a sec. Yeah. For, 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 for just a moment. Okay. It's not write code. Let's write yeah. comments. Oh. Let's just write Thank comments. You. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah. My because like I feel like you're exploring the problem by writing yeah. code. But writing code takes more time. So let's explore the problem in a different way. Because exactly. you're you're actually making progress on the problem to, on your understanding of the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're doing it in a slow way. So let's let's see if we can speed that up by not writing code. Okay. So I have a Word. So I should look word and compare it to the yeah, tabs. So yeah, and what are the different situations when you're doing this comparison? Like, what are the what are the different things you need to take into account? So, hmm. yeah, if a letter is not present, if there are multiple letters, yeah, and if there is a letter, so that's that's what. Yeah, an underscore. Yeah. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to make another test case here, too. Oh, sure. OK. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, am I good to go? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Please, sorry, I didn't mean to hit pause on you. Okay. That's what I love about these things. We can both type at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. No apologies there. That was not my intention. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. right. sorry. Mm -hmm. I want to make a copy of this. No. So. 
let's write a simple for loop. I'm not that big of a fan of for loops, but <laughs> we'll, this, we'll, might, this might be an interesting conversation for the end because I'm <laughs> the other way around. I I tend to write by default for loops of this style, and clearly you tend to write a functional, you know reduce yeah. map, you know map reduce pattern yeah, yeah there's yeah. interesting trade-offs between the two of them and maybe that's a conversation for later and I, so we will look okay. hi so this is our first letter and we will try to find it here so Let's mm. I think it's a match. Just a sec. So console log another way. So array here. Match. I'm not sure which way around is it. So match. No. Mm, no. Wait, is it matches? matches. Again, I'm, I'm making it clear here that I don't use regex all the time. Is it match the res regex thing? Yeah. The re regex method? Yeah, yeah, I don't think we should, I don't think we should use, re use regex here. Okay. Yeah, I, so, I think there's a... Yeah, basically, I wanted to see if it matches. So that's well, the first thing. If it matches like, or... Yeah. Let, say that in a different way, and I think it might lead you to a... If it contains... There you go. Yeah. So... Uh, it's funny how language sort of shapes our thinking, right? We use a word, and it leads us down a path. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Mm. Contains is a string. Value. Uh, I it's think a string method and includes its array method. Let's see. Oh yeah, the undefines are my console logs at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So true. Yeah. True. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Yep. Okay, so if um, that was very close, if it does, but we need to be extra sure about the. Okay, so one question. Mm -hmm. So if I I have these tiles, these tiles, so this does not match. Uh, line forty four. What yeah. should the return value be? Um, minus one. Yeah, agreed. So let's actually, so yeah. I, in these little test cases, I often put the return, the expected return value here, and in this one, in this particular case, we should we should return five. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we, good. We need to uh, take into account this. So this will yeah. match on both letters. Right. It will match this one. Correct. So we need to return. We don't we actually have two of remove those it. available. Good. Yeah. So we should remove it. Yes. Hmm. I want to see again because uh, if I need to return it, need to remove it, I need to know where it is. So I can. Yeah. Uh, you were onto something at the beginning, though. You at at the beginning of this, you were doing something where you were going to count the number of underscores. Yeah. Can you can you riff on that idea a little bit? So yeah, um, 
I need, uh, I wanted to count the number of underscores. So if I uh, am missing two letters and I have two underscores, then it's okay. It's I okay, can, right? But but you don't just need the counts of the underscores. What do you What do you need? Yeah, I need to count the number of uh, number of hits and misses, the number of uh, letters that. Yeah, you need to count all your tiles. Yeah. Yeah, you need the counts of everything. Yeah. Everything available. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. Uh, but like don't you also need the count of like o's for example in you know, line 45 test case. Um, you oh. want to know how many underscores are available, but you also need to know how many O's are available so that like when you consume the first O, now you can keep track that, you know, mm. how many do you have left? Well, and, you know, then we need yeah. another one. You know what I mean? Of course. Then I should. That. Uh, yeah. Is that happy kids in the background? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> very happy. Good. Uh, hey, that, that, that that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Just <laughs> yeah, just the sibling rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that happens at my house too sometimes. So it's it's okay. This is life uh, working from home. Exactly. Exactly that. So I want to, uh, for every character, I want to store it in an object with, it, with its own value. So are we going to count the letters in the word yeah. or are we going to count the tiles? Mm. We, yeah. So if we count the tiles, so we can subtract at every instance when it matches yeah that's yeah i like that yeah Tiles. so okay hmm. like this Yeah, no, it's okay. This is actually one of the situations where I feel like this functional style yeah. of looping actually gets a little bit awkward um, <laughs> because there's a side effect, right? You yeah. want this side yeah. effect of, of accumulating these counts. Yeah, so you can do it this way, but it, yeah. Yeah, so uh, but maybe it's just awkward it. to me because I'm an old C programmer. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to make fun of old C programmers. Yeah. I wouldn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I I can rip on you about something that I know, but <laughs> yeah. So uh, if uh, sure. yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, four, I four think each. That's a good. Plus. Yeah. Plus one. And else. Dash on. Zero. Uh, zero. Oh, yeah, that's actually a really interesting way of doing it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I back, no, this is. Mm. I, I actually think map was. Or. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple ways you can do it. Yeah. What am I missing? For each is not a function. Uh, so oh my God! Out. Sorry. For each. No, it's okay. Yeah. There we go. So if we have this, if. if Help. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. If, I if, if forgot the most basic thing. Yeah. No. See. Uh, yeah. This is a little awkward for me too because like I just wouldn't. Yeah. Write it this way. I wouldn't write it this way myself. In fact, let me. Let, yeah. let's, I'm, I'm game to like try it this way. Let's let's actually split this out onto multiple lines to make it a little bit more cleaner. Clear. So that we can, yeah. yeah, we can because you've got assignments and side effects and all kinds of things going on in here. Let's yeah. actually like make this easier to read. There we go. Right. So, so if it's not undefined, it's not undefined. Okay. So we have a T and a C. If it's uh, return one. There we go. Yeah. I'm not sure why it's here. Yeah. Okay. So we counted the values. Yeah. Now we can loop through the word, and every time we encounter some of this, some of these, yeah, we can subtract. Yep. So okay. Interesting si side effects in a ternary operator. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Uh, maybe you're not accustomed to that, but. Yeah. yeah no, I, I'm definitely is, not. Uh, but that's to okay. Do, uh, to do uh, looping through an array and uh, to basically for me it's for side effects, but yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, and map returns. Right. The copy of the array. Right. So. Right. It expects a value produced at each thing, whereas for each we can just like do some side yeah. effect, modify the array. Yeah. Yeah. No, I gotcha. Okay. So. Uh, all right. So we got tiles char count uh, tiles char and then we can hmm, it's not optimal but we need to yeah let's not worry about yeah. optimality yeah. let's not think about that let's yeah so if uh, it Okay, that's our count. Word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, we want to check. Yeah. Do we have a tile for this letter? So, if it is greater than zero. Then we yeah. want to subtract. In, in 
this case, I'm actually, keep typing, by the way. I'm going to talk a little bit and type myself, but please don't stop. Okay. I'm actually going to reformat this as an if statement. Oh, okay. Since we're not, so it, the ternary made sense in your for each like functional um, operator, but I think it makes less sense down here. Yeah. Um, so I'm not. Yeah. I didn't plan on doing something complicated. If I need to do one thing, then ternary yeah. is the way to go for me. But right. if I need to do multiple things, then I yeah. have to use this state. Well, like in the lambda above, we needed yeah. we wanted an expression. We could have also put a block in there with an if statement, right? But in this case, we're writing we're writing code, so we might as well like do it block style. Um, because we're not actually producing a result here. We're making a decision. So just, to, exactly. and they, they, I think this is then easier, easier to read. So if we have a tile available, yeah. subtract one from it. Okay. What, what are our other cases? Yeah. Yeah. Cause so, I think we're going to have a handful of cases here. So it'll be, it'll be much, much easier to read and hopefully easier for you to write. Let's see. If it doesn't, doesn't exist, or if it is a value of zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wanna, we wanna check if there are some underscores. Right. We we didn't have a character. So as a backup, can we use an underscore? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So if those, yeah, this will get out of hand real quick. So. Real quick? No, no, no. Let, let's pause for a sec. Do we yeah, actually so need it? Do we need that there? So what do we know? Can we build some of this into our if statement on line 48? Right, we're checking to see if it's greater than zero, but can we yeah. have make that test strong enough such that we can just look for underscores at line fifty? If it's uh, greater than zero, why? Uh, could you tell me why? Why would we check for underscores? If no, 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 no. We're not going to check for underscores there. But can we yeah. can we make that test at line forty eight strong enough such that at line fifty all we need to do is check for an underscore? Or is it strong enough mm -hmm. already? Mm -hmm. Just a sec. So yeah. Maybe we could incorporate. I'm going to do something. one other thing here. Yeah, thanks. Right. We'll, we'll just voice <laughs> that, that out since we're yeah. going to use that a bunch. I usually do that. So if there is a letter. And there's one more in here too. Hmm? Yeah, keep keep going. Sorry, I yeah. was just if fixing my little <laughs> the thing that I missed. <laughs> Code janitor. Yeah, that's right. Code <laughs> janitor. Oh my my God. God. I'm <laughs> totally going to use that. One moment here while I code janitor. <laughs> yeah. So if there is a letter that is greater than zero and if I actually think that your test at line 49 now is strong enough because if that if tiles of letter it'll either evaluate to a number yeah. which will be zero or greater than zero or it'll evaluate to undefined in which case undefined is not greater than zero that's false so I think we can just fall down to the else block and see and check for underscores. Yeah. So right. I think that test actually is strong enough. Yeah. So that's 
Yeah. Is greater than zero. Greater than zero, yeah, the same test. Then cool, what do we do in this case? Uh, then we subtract this by one. Yeah, we will consume an, under, uh, an underscore, we'll consume a blank yeah. tile, yeah. Okay, cool. So we're, I think we're, we're almost there. We just need yeah. to actually compute our return value, right? We're now keeping track of tiles and our tile counts and, and tile availability. Yeah. How do we, here, I'm going to, I'm going to code janitor here. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of that because that has so, served its purpose. Hi. And we should break from the loop so it doesn't catch this as well on its way down. Ah, but it, but it, it won't, right? Because we we've the first test was true, so we fall into the if block. We won't hit. Uh, the yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, uh, I usually I usually don't uh, write else ifs. So it's if if, if if sorry if I pushed you down this file yeah, you're yeah. not familiar with. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 you're not no, no it's, it's perfectly yeah. fine, but Barely. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah, if you have uh, multiple if statements, I use them to catch the errors. Oh. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But in this case, and these aren't necessarily errors. We just need to now accumulate up our yeah. our total value, or decide that we can't. Mm -hmm. Right. We just so, you know, decide that that word is not going to work given yeah. our available tiles. So we doesn't need these. We yeah. need a variable for. Uh, the so you're and generating yourself. These, I like it. These are included here. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, so you yeah. can get rid of those. Okay. Yep, code janitor, get rid of it. <laughs> result and result plus equal. There we go. And values. Letter. And All right. Yeah. OK. And so let, you, let's, oh, go on. Sorry, finish what you're saying. Yeah. House minus one. Okay. And then where are we going to return result? Uh, yeah. yeah, let's try. Okay, we got the minus one. And wait, did I? Okay, we've got one little, we've got one bug here. And maybe it's. Yeah, we don't have any. Yeah. So one. Oh, oh, so, oh, my test case was wrong. It should have been a yeah. four. <laughs> Good. Okay. Awesome. Let's pause okay. there. Let me yeah. give you some high level things that I noticed during, during the interview. Um, yeah. So the, the top level thing, and I see this often, is that um, mm -hmm. I think you I know what you're saying. writing code yeah, before I you were ready. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, I think there's a reason that this is a common occurrence. I think people see somebody who's been doing this for a long time and they see that like you give you give somebody a problem who's like really an experienced coder and they're like oh uh, i can just do this this and this and then they go yeah right and and it's so you get this impression that somebody who's good should just have the code at their fingertips yeah and i think that's not correct Right. The difference between somebody who's been doing this for a really long time and somebody who's been who has less experience is that the person who's done it a long time has built up a library of techniques and they've 
they're very practiced at selecting the right ones. Whereas somebody who's got a little bit less experience, they might not have the techniques at the ready and be able to pattern match from the problem into what the right techniques are. Right. So you have to do a little bit more. You have to think a little bit more about the problem. The, the thing is that like the steps are the same, like understand the problem, you know, pick some techniques to attempt to apply. Maybe some of them work. Maybe some of them don't weed the ones that don't work out. Then you're going to make a plan for how to write the code, applying that technique. The experienced coder is actually following all the same steps, even when it appears as though they just went done. Right. It's that yeah. they, the first couple of steps in that process happened really fast in their head because they're drawing on previous experience. Exactly. And so like, my recommendation is that, especially in an interview, when there's, you know, there's, there's some pressure or there's at least some appearance of pressure is that you should really be careful to not skip those steps because you'll, you'll end up writing code too early and you'll end up having to experiment in code rather than like solving the problem intellectually yeah. and then, and then writing the code. And then the next thing I noticed might actually be a side effect of the first thing is that when you started writing code, there were some interesting little inconsistencies into how, how you were writing code. One example, when you were writing code at first, in fact, actually, I even see a couple examples or one example here now. Um, in some places you put semicolons at the end of a line in other places you didn't. Now in JavaScript, of course, you, you might have, we all might have our opinions on <laughs> semicolons being optional yeah. or required or whatever, right? They are optional. However, good style, I would just say dictate that you either do one or the other, right? Personally, yeah. I like semicolons. Again, I'm an old C guy. Um, I'm not going to judge you for not using them, but if you're inconsistent, it's it, as the interviewer, I start to ask questions, right? Yeah. Are you coding with intention, right? And if, and if the style you're writing in has some weird inconsistencies, especially at that kind of a level, it makes me wonder, like, have you really solved the problem yet? Or are you just like trying to throw code at the wall and see what sticks? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, um, I think consistent style is important. I, I'm not going to judge people's style as long as it's somewhat consistent. But again, if you haven't solved the problem, then you, it's harder to code with intention. And then it's hard to get those, those little details right. And when you're as an interviewer, when you're watching somebody code, like it's amazing how much information I can pick up about somebody's habits. Yeah. And what's really important for you as the candidate is to make sure that the signal that you're sending to the interviewer is actually representative to what you would do when you're coding by yourself. Exactly. You know, without me watching, right? There were other things you did here that that seemed like, yeah, you 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 know, are building experience towards becoming a good you know fluent coder. Um, but then there were other things that were like, oh, wait a minute, but is this how you're going to write code every day on the job? Um, and that's and so that kind of leaves me with some questions. But I think it all comes back to not actually giving yourself the time to thoroughly solve the problem intellectually first, right? And then everything kind of starts to come apart a little bit from there. Yeah, um, yeah I like, like we, we ended up with a, with a good solution. You, you know, you had a, a, a couple of points you were like, oh, I'm not quite sure if this is optimal or not. How do you feel about this solution with respect to like time and space complexity now? Yeah. Well, it's not too bad. <laughs> uh, 
yeah. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. Yeah. So I try not to loop through the same array more than I need to. Sure. So if I, so if I going to loop through the array and then uh, and then cross reference it to another array and loop through the another array inside the first loop, then I know something. Better. Yeah, right. But no, this is pretty good, right? You have two loops at the top. There's a loop at line 28, loop at line 29, yeah. right? In, inside the split. So there's a linear pass. And then, and then you're doing a linear pass to count. Uh, we yeah. could actually combine those two, but that's two linear passes like this, not you know, one inside the other. So okay, um, yeah. I mean, so this is this ends up being a linear time, linear space, right? I, yeah. I, I think this is good. So yeah, I like it. What did you notice about how the interview went? Do you have feedback for me? What did yeah? Do you have any comments? Yeah. So. Um, you noticed exactly when I was stuck. So you uh, kept your foot on the brake at the right time and just pressed it exactly when you needed to. So um, you paid attention to my thinking process and went like, okay, stop. Just let us pause for a minute. Yeah. Wind back one, two, three steps. Yeah, and the it means a lot to point out when I took this challenge. Let's call it a challenge. So um, I took it uh, a little too seriously in the mind uh, in the meaning of uh, time restraints. Yeah. So I rushed into it. When yeah. I maybe should have. Yeah. Sometimes and, uh, slow is fast, you know? Yeah. It like like so, if you if you pause to collect yourself a little bit, it yeah, exactly. I think that's right. Yeah, and uh, you picked up on that and yeah, it really, really meant a lot to just take a deep breath, look at what I'm doing. So yeah. And Overall, this is one of the best interviews they had. So awesome. uh, there was no strict demeanor. Like, <laughs> okay, I, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you you know what what what, what do you think? Yeah, what does it mean? So you know, yeah. I want to talk just for a minute about hinting yeah. about hinting in an interview. Um, so my job as an interviewer is to learn as much as I can about how you solve problems and write code. Yeah. And if I let you get stuck and I sit there looking stern, pretend to look stern here. Yes. I'm very yeah. stern. Um, if, I, if I let you get stuck, you're not making progress on the problem and I'm not learning anything. Right. Oh. Right. So when I give a hint in an interview, yeah. it's, it's because I want to keep the interview moving forward okay. and I want to keep learning about you. So I'm always, always thinking to myself, what am I learning right now? What am I learning right now? What else do I need to learn to make a good hiring decision? How do I find that out? And if I let you sit there getting stuck, we are both dead in the water. <laughs> you can't speak my brain. I, no, no, I can't. I haven't yeah. figured that out yet. <laughs> so, so like when, when you're stuck, like I want to let you try to solve the problem, but yeah. if you're really stuck, then I need us both to move on. Right. Yeah. And, and actually sometimes I give, I'll give a hint when it's in completely clear to me that the candidate is, is knows what they're doing. Like if I, so I might decide, Hey, you need help here. And I want to move on to learn something else. Okay, fine. I'm going to help you. I yeah. might also move the interview along. If I've, if I've become completely convinced that you've got this, like, okay, cool. Now I'm not, I'm not learning anything anymore. So let's move on to something else where I can learn something. So a hint isn't, isn't actually an indication that you're doing badly. Sometimes 
it, it's purely an indication that I want to move on, that oh, okay. I want to learn something else. I thought it redirected some imaginary points. So like uh, I needed to help him. So yeah, he's maybe not. It could go more. either way. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, well, and, and there are two, there, I can give you multiple examples in either direction in this interview. Here's one at the beginning, you started typing out, you started typing something out, right? Mm -hmm. And it was, it was clear, I, you know, which was the, um, the values of the, um, of the tiles. Right. And I'm like, yeah. okay, you know what you need. I'm going to give it to you because I don't want to sit here and wait for you to type this out. Right. You had yeah. made a decision. It was clear that you kind of knew what you wanted. And yeah, you said you wanted an array and that, like I had handy a map, but watching you type that out was not a valuable use of either of our time. Yeah. And then there were other cases, you know, like, you know, where you, you had had this idea of counting underscores, but we actually needed to count all the things, you know? And so that was a place where it's like, Hey, wait a minute, let's go back to this idea that you had previously. Let's expand on it. Right. So that was a case where I was worried that you were going to kind of get stuck longer than I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And so that was a chance for me to like, okay, no, I want to keep this moving. So let's go back there and, and revisit that idea. So there's, there's an example in either direction, like, Hey, I, you know what you need. I'm going to help you along. I'm going to speed this up. And another case where like, actually you, you need a little bit of help to move on to the next thing. So I can see you write more code. Yeah. So uh, did you get the experience when someone just like throws his, his hands in the air and says, okay, I'm done. I can't do this. So. <laughs> you know, I've actually, I've, in thousands of interviews, I've actually never had that happen. Um, you know, like I've had it happen in classes I'm teaching or yeah. like, like people I'm mentoring, but I've never actually had that happen in an interview. Um, but you know, I'm kind of a coach and, you know, teacher by nature. So, you know, I, if somebody throws their hands up, I'm, I'm like, okay, well let's, let's just, and one thing I have done though, is it for, in a situation where the person I'm interviewing is like yeah. clearly really bad, I'll just turn it into a teaching session. Oh, Yeah. Um, Right. Because here's my philosophy about interviewing is that I want everyone I interview to walk out of the room wanting the job. I don't care how good or bad you are <laughs> at the end of the interview. I want you to want the job. Yeah. It, it's a humbling experience. And if you treat the other person right, then yeah. Yeah. I yeah. do it. Yeah. Right. Like, and I have had a couple of interviews in the past where like very, very quickly, it was clear that this person was not going to make the bar. Like I'm going to give you every chance to make the bar, but if it's clear in, you know, five, 10 minutes that like this person is just not ready for the position that I'm interviewing them for. Yeah. Okay. Let's work this through this problem together. Let's turn this into a coaching session. You know, you're going to take something away from it. You're going to have a good experience. You know, that's better for everybody. So yeah, then they sure appreciate that. And that makes them want the job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even if in the end I say no higher, of, of course I would in that kind of a situation, they're mm -hmm. going to go tell their, their friends like, Oh man, I interviewed with this company and I talked to this guy and this like, was really nice. Yeah, really fun. Yeah. yeah, right. And yeah. and then they were like, you should go apply to that company. I, I didn't get the job, but boy, you should go work there. Right? Yeah, like, it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. All right. So that was it. Kudos to the brave soul for coming on and giving this a shot. Uh, he didn't quite get to the second problem, but I think he is humble enough to handle the interview well, and he received the feedback pretty well. So hopefully this helped him grow. But uh, for those watching on YouTube, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you even want to see more interviews like this. Um, also, Again, thank you, Formation, for lending one of your instructors. For those that don't know, Formation 
essentially what I see them as is a company or kind of an educational program that helps people that are already in the industry that are kind of like junior level accelerate their careers uh, much faster when you go to their program. And, you know, I'm pretty critical of programs, but I've talked to Sophie and Michael who lead that program and they're good people. The instructors are all really smart people. So shout out to Formation. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed.